Hello and welcome back. I'm standing here in front of a 2022 Hyundai Ionic 5 Limited, about to do the inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test. Although this is gonna be a cold weather range test because it's pretty cold here in Northern New Jersey. When I left this morning, it was only 17 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's about negative eight Celsius. It's warmed up to a balmy 21 degrees Fahrenheit right now. I just plugged it into a Electrify America DC fast charger, gonna charge her back up to 100%, hop out onto the highway and drive in long loops until she won't go any further. Once I get in the car and I'm a little bit warmer, we're gonna talk about what we do to set the cars up for these range tests so we can get consistent results. And we'll talk a little bit more about the Ionic 5. But for now, please don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle reviews, range tests, all that good stuff from the Inside EVs YouTube channel. All righty, we are cruising down the New Jersey Turnpike at a constant 70 miles an hour in a 2022 Hyundai Ionic 5 Limited all-wheel drive. Uh, this guy has a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack now. That's the usable capacity and it's EPA range rated at 256 miles. That's the combined EPA range rating. Unfortunately, we couldn't find the highway EPA range rating. The EPA stopped publishing the city and highway uh, ranges for some of the cars for some reason. But if we get that uh, information in the future, I'll add it to the video in the description. But for now, we have 256 miles as the combined EPA range rating. We don't expect to get that on a 70 mile an hour highway range test, especially in cold weather conditions. We actually have a uh, benchmark to go by uh, Kyle Connor did a uh, 70 mile an hour highway range test just last week in Colorado. He didn't have a limited, uh, but he did have an all wheel drive Ionic 5. And the difference is in the tires. This has bigger 20 inch wheels. He had 19 inch wheels. And this has fatter rubber, 255 45s. So you would expect the range to be slightly less in this vehicle. They were both all wheel drive, but with the Ionic 5, when you're in eco mode, which we put the cars in eco mode uh, for the range tests, it decouples the front motor. So we're running as a rear wheel drive vehicle right now, and that should help the range. Some of the other things I wanna talk about what we do for all the range tests, just to make fair comparisons, is number one, we always set the tire pressure to the manufacturer's uh, spec, which I did this morning when the vehicle was cold. Uh, we also check any type of wind apps, which I have, and it, we have a five mile an hour crosswind from the east. So I'm getting it coming this way right now. Uh, when I turn around and head back up the turnpike, I should be getting it from the other side. It's not a headwind, it's almost a direct crosswind at about five miles an hour. So that, that has a little bit of an impact. Uh, we also check the speedometer to GPS. We have a couple GPS apps that we check. Uh, in the case of the Ionic 5, it was right on 70 miles an hour, was 70 miles an hour, so I didn't have to adjust the uh, uh, cruise control. We usually set uh, the vehicle's cruise control. The Ionic 5 has a nice suite of uh, um, ADAS, so I have lane centering, adaptive cruise set to 70 miles an hour, uh, the regen level, really doesn't matter that much because we don't slow up that much. It's pretty much 70 miles an hour the whole way. We have to slow up a couple of times when we turn around, but the regen setting really doesn't make that much of a difference. And in this case, I have it set on auto. The vehicle has like this auto regen setting where if I'm approaching a car uh, too quickly that's in front of me, it will automatically apply the regenerative braking and will recapture some of the energy there. It's in eco drive mode, as I mentioned. We always set the vehicles in the most efficient drive mode that still allows for heating and air conditioning. There's some vehicles that have like an ultra conservative eco mode uh, that really just shuts everything else down and it only uses the vehicle per, for propulsion. We don't use that drive mode because, hey, I wanna be a little comfortable when I'm doing these tests. It's a cold day here in New Jersey. Actually, it's warmed up. We're at almost 30 degrees Fahrenheit now. When I started today, it was 17 degrees. Uh, bright, sunny day and the sun's beating into the cabin through this nice, beautiful, panoramic glass roof, so it's helping to warm up the cabin. But we always set the uh, heating and cooling on 68 degrees and usually put it on the lowest fan setting that we can in order to be comfortable. So I have it on setting one right now, 68 degrees, 
setting one, so a little energy is being used for heat, but as I said again, uh, you know, we, we, we try to represent what somebody would get when they were on a long highway ride at 70 miles an hour. And, you know, most reasonable people aren't going to turn off the heating and cooling just to eke out a couple more miles, and we're not going to do it on these range tests either. So, okay, tire pressure, uh, speedometer set. Uh, I DC fast charged the car this morning to try to warm up the battery a little. The battery is cold. It's cold that it got uh, below 10 degrees where I lived last night overnight. But the vehicle was in my garage, and the garage only gets at the coldest down to about 38 degrees. So, but still, it cold soaked at under 40 degrees the battery overnight. That's going to have an effect on the vehicle's range. Uh, and we'll see how much of an effect. But as I mentioned earlier, Kyle just did this test out in Colorado. It was a little warmer. When he started, it was in the 50s, but it got colder during the day and he ended, it was in the 30s. It's the opposite here. When I started this range test, it was in the low 20s uh, after DC fast charging and it's creeping up, but it's gonna get into the 30s today. So, um, you know, it's still a cold weather range test. Uh, this probably, I would bet I'm gonna get 20 to 30 miles less than what I would have if it were 70 degrees and perfect today. But, uh, you know, that's not just the Ionic 5. All electric vehicles are affected by cold weather. And that's why we try to do cold weather range tests as well as range tests when it's a little bit warmer out. So this is the Ionic 5's cold weather range test. Hopefully we'll be able to grab another one of these guys maybe in May or June and do the same test on the same course. We'll see what the difference is. But uh, for now, we have the temperature and the weather that we have is what we have to work with. We're gonna see how far we go. I'm gonna check back in when I'm at 75% state of charge and we've gone 25% of the trip, then again at 50%, then 25%, and then we'll do the wrap up uh, where we finish. And that's another thing I wanna mention. Uh, we always try to start and finish at the same location or very close. We do these loop style tests up and down highways. Uh, that way we can, uh, it helps to negate any ele change in elevation or uh, wind, as I mentioned earlier. If you just go on a range test and just drive in one direction, in our opinion, it's not the best way to do a range test because there could be an elevation change. You could have a tailwind the entire way. By doing these loops that Kyle and I do up and down the highways we drive, it helps to offset those factors that you know can really affect a range test. It's not a perfect range test, but I think we do a pretty good job at it in controlling as many variables as we can. Check back with you when we're at 75% state of charge. Well, we're at 75% state of charge. We're 25% of the way into the range test and we've gone 53 miles. Not quite as much as I was hoping to go. And our average consumption so far is 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Really not great. I mentioned earlier that Kyle Connor did the 70 mile an hour highway range test on an Ionic 5. Uh, it had the 19 inch wheels though. Uh, it wasn't all wheel drive version, so it, it was close to apples to apples, not exactly. The wheels do make a difference. Uh, and he went 226 miles, actually no, 227. And he did it in a little bit warmer temperature. So, you know, the cold is gonna have an effect here. I was hoping it wouldn't have that much of an effect though, because that's pretty significant. If, if this were to hold true uh, in all four quarters of the trip, we'd end up with 212 miles. So, you know, 15 miles less than what Kyle did. Uh, that's, uh, it's not unreasonable considering the, uh, the temperature difference, but I was really hoping to get 220 out of this guy today, but we'll see. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, driving conditions are pretty good now. It's warming up or up over 30 degrees. I think it was around 34, 35 degrees now. So it's not bitter cold anymore. And the wind is about the same so far. Uh, still have that crosswind that around somewhere between six and seven miles an hour. And uh, listen, cruising along, we'll check back in at 50% uh, state of charge. We'll see where we're at. Well, we're at 50% state of charge. We're halfway home and we have gone a total of 103 miles. That's kind of a womp, womp, womp to me. Uh, you know, if we finish up with 206, it's a little disappointing to me. Uh, I really thought we were going to go further with the Ionic 5. That's not a great showing, but we still have half of the way to go, and it is in the cold. Although it's warmed up, we're well in the 30s. We're up around 36, 37 degrees. 
And you know, the, the strange thing is, so we went 53 miles the first leg from 100 to 75%. We went 50 miles exactly from 75% to uh, 50%. But the consumption rate got better. We, we finished up, we're at 75%, we were at 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. But at 50%, we're at 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So you'd have thought that we would have gone further, but we didn't. We went three miles less and somehow the consumption got a little better. So I don't really know how that works, but uh, you know we're gonna keep moving on and see where we're at. Uh, the winds picked up a little bit, just a mile an hour or two now. We're up at around, uh, seven to eight miles an hour crosswind. It's still a crosswind, it's not a headwind, so that makes it a little bit better, but uh, we always note this and I always pay attention to that as we are driving. Uh, we'll check back at 25%. Uh, let's see if we could be at 155 to 160 miles at that point, hopefully. Really want to get this guy to like 210, uh, but we'll see. You know, uh, we. We say this in all the range tests, really not rooting for the car. I mean, I'd like to see electric vehicles have as far range as they can so that they can be, um, you know, really uh, offer the utility that families need. But we're here just to report on what we observe. You know, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, rooting for the car to get more or less. I'm going to drive it until I feel like it's kind of unsafe to drive anymore when you don't get that response when you press on the pedal and it's really at the end and you only have a mile or two left maybe before you just run it flat. Uh, and then we'll see how far it goes. But you know, when I do these range tests, I'm not trying to get more range. I'm trying to report things accurately and that's what we do here. When all said and done at the end of this range test, that will be as far as this car went on this specific day under these specific conditions. If it was warmer, it probably would have went further. Uh, if you know, I had inflated the tires up five pounds higher than what the manufacturer recommends, it probably would have gone further because you, you can squeak out a few more miles when you overinflate the tires. But to be fair, we set the tire pressure always at what the manufacturer recommends. So that's what the manufacturer says to do and that's what we do. But we know EV hypermilers that bump up that tire pressure a little bit and eke out a little bit more miles. And you can do that, but I would recommend not going too high because then you you, you, you really risk a blowout and, and it becomes unsafe, but you could probably squeeze a couple more pounds in there uh, and not have an issue. Uh, we'll check back when it's 25% and see how far we've gone. Checking in at 25% state of charge. We've gone 75% of the way and we have covered 153 miles. Consumption remains at 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour. So we covered another 50 miles in that last 25% of the trip. So we did 53 miles, 50, 50 again. So it's looking like we're gonna finish up right around 200 miles, maybe a little more. A um, little disappointing as far as I'm concerned, but hey, it is what it is. We'll pull up with what we pull up. A uh, couple things I want to note. One of the things I forgot to mention earlier, the Ionic has in its settings something called winter mode. And when you have winter mode checked, the car will uh, use energy to warm the battery. Uh, we have that unchecked because that would be energy that we are using to keep the battery warm that could be using to propel the vehicle. So that's not currently checked. I had it on this morning when I was driving to the Electrify America charging station to DC fast charger, but that's really the purpose of that, to try to keep the battery from getting too cold. So you can't, uh, if the battery's too cold, it won't accept much power when you're DC fast charging. Now other electric vehicles like Tesla, the Porsche Taycan, the Lucid Air, they let you precondition for DC fast charging and that really warms up the battery. The system in Hyundai isn't that robust. It really doesn't get the battery too warm, not nearly warm enough to accept the full power that it can accept when it's DC fast charging. I think Hyundai needs to work on that, to be honest with you. Um, they sent out a notice to Norwegian owners, a Norwegian Ionic 5 owner saying that they're gonna have a software update and they're gonna allow them to uh, warm the battery up better so the car can precondition uh, more robustly and accept more power when it's DC fast charging when it's cold. I've already done some DC fast charge recordings with this car and it's definitely being affected greatly by the cold weather. I'm not pulling anywhere near what 
Hyundai claims it should pull. And Hyundai says the car should charge from 10 to 80 percent in about 18 minutes. And it's taking me 30 minutes to do that. And I've tried to warm up the battery the best that I could. So, you know, Hyundai definitely needs to work on the preconditioning feature and get it so that the car can warm itself up better and people can charge faster when they're on a road trip. I'm gonna have some DC fast charge videos up on Inside EV soon, so keep an eye out for them. But for now, I have the winter mode turned off because we're not concerned about warming the battery for DC fast charging while I'm on this range test. And they also have a cool screen that shows you your energy use. And it divides it between the battery care, which would be to warm the battery, uh, climate, the propulsion, and electronics. And so far today, I've used 4% for climate control, 2% for various electronics. I'm not really sure exactly what that is. I don't even have the radio on because I, I, I try not to waste any energy when I'm doing these uh, range tests. That's just to electronics to power the car. And 94% uh, and of our energy today has been used to propel the car. So that's where we're at. Uh, you can see there's no use for battery care because I have winter mode turned off, not wasting that energy. Uh, the next check-in is going to be when we are done at the Electrify America DC Fast Charging Station. I'm actually going to have to stop at one that is about 15 miles uh, closer to me than the original one that I was going to stop in at because I was really expecting this to get a solid 215 to 220. Uh, but since it's kind of underperforming in my range, I need to stop at, uh, there's another Electrify America right on our route, right off the turnpike, that's about 15 miles closer than the one I had planned on going to. We're not making that one today, the other one. So uh, I had to change the route a little bit. It's no big deal, it's still driving in loops. It's just I'm not gonna end up at the exact same one that we started at this morning. Check in when we're there. All right, so we're here at the Electrify America DC Fast Charging Station in East Brunswick, New Jersey, and we finished up with 195 miles driven on the nose. A little disappointing. We were only able to cover 42 miles in that last 25% of battery. As a matter of fact, we drove it a mile or two after the state of charge hit zero, and the pedal response became really like a marshmallow. I was pressing the accelerator, and it just barely even went any faster and couldn't maintain more than like 40 miles an hour. I pulled off the highway at around 194 miles driven and uh, I was just on this back road uh, to see if I could squeeze out a couple more miles and I was only able to do a couple miles and I really turned around and came back here because I thought we were just going to run out. Uh, one thing I noticed on the Ionic 5, once you get down under 5% state of charge, you really don't get much of a pedal response. That's not the case with a lot of EVs that really doesn't happen until you get really close closer to zero, but after 5%, it really doesn't have much power. So note that if you're a potential Ionic 5 owner. So we finished up 195 miles driven on our cold weather, 70 mile an hour highway range test. Again, this guy is EPA range rated at 256 miles per charge. We weren't expecting to getting that at a constant 70 miles an hour, and especially in these cold weather conditions. So while it's surprising it's not entirely su surprising i really did think we were going to get around 210 ish though but i've been wrong before and i was wrong on this one i really didn't expect to get less than 200 miles but we finished up with 195 miles driven we're going to plug this guy in now and do a complete zero to 100 percent dc fast charge test we'll have that video up on inside evs in a week or two so keep an eye out for the full DC fast charge recording with analysis as always. So that's it for the Inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test for the 2022 Hyundai Ionic 5. If you like what we're doing here, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EV's YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.